All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. Uh, my name is Eric Paul Zine with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be getting into the preview picks and core plays here for the Valspar Championship. And I'm pretty excited for this one. It is one that typically does play a little bit more difficult, which, as you guys know, you can typically gain an edge there when it plays more difficult. When you get a tournament like last week that the scoring is going to be really low, you know, it makes it a little bit hard to predict. Variance is going to be higher. And really, this week kicks off a nice stretch of golf here. We got about two months of quality golf tournaments coming up here where especially for pga dfs where it's going to be a fun stretch of golf here guys no more of the flu lot tournaments here uh you know the gimmicky type events we had just great golf here for tfs purposes and i'm really excited for that and we're going to get into that right now all right guys so just doing that quick recap of the previous week as well um i do have the write-up pulled up here which is kind of the main source of where i give my predictions personally um but you know nine to five is much more than just you know me personally there's a lot of data in there everyone can make kind of their own picks and whatnot which you know last week definitely nailed the top end and really did well with the core plays as well um it was a week where i was really pulling for tony finau and uh cameron champ uh but it was very interesting because once i saw that cameron champ you know and tony finau had a chance to win i'm like why did i ever think that they were gonna win because he had just knew that they wouldn't be able to close it out. It's just like, how, how are they going to um, burn us here? And they end up doing it. But overall, you know, it was a week that I thought was extremely fun. It was a week where I can't wait to play this event again next year. But it was one in which we were able to, you know, learn. Uh, the core plays did well. And really, to me, that tells me that, you know, it is going to be predictable in terms of, you know, which groups that you want to be on. And just maybe limit that to like the top five. And then from there, really just spread out your ownership really spread everything out so i had four groups in my core plays john rom jason Colcraft, justin Sutton, and chris kirk really like that and then from there just really spread it out uh, don't even really care about the other plays that much because it's going to be a higher variance week each and every year that's just going to be what it is so definitely a learning curve there but that's what is going to happen when you get a dfs event for the first time all right guys so getting into the course preview here for the valspar championship it is going to be played at um Copperhead is pretty much the abbreviated name for it. In Sinisbrook Resort at Copperhead. Um, it is going to be a par 71. Um, course length going to be playing a little bit longer than it typically does. Um, about 100 yards longer than it typically does. Um, still not that long. Uh, it's going to be average green speeds. Uh, Bermuda greens the past. Four winners have been Paul Casey the last two years. Uh, he defended his title in 2019. We haven't seen this tournament, though, um, since 2019 because of the COVID year. Uh, Charles Schwartzel and Adam Hadwin were the other winners. And then just kind of pulling it up here, we'll pull it up uh, on the 9-to-5 stat sheet. We can see here that this tournament has been, you know, harder to score on. Uh, average cut line has been 1.3. Average win score has been minus 10. You know, that's something that is pretty interesting. And the fact that the weather hasn't really been an issue, you know, that hasn't been causing the scores to get higher. It's kind of something, you know, to look at and monitor. Then just kind of looking at the key stats. So I have it sorted by top 10. Players that finish in the top 10 have been really strong in birdie to bogey ratio. like to see that. Something that's interesting to me, I just said it was a par 71. Kind of interesting to see that players that have finished top 10 have actually been doing, you know, pretty well at the par 5 score. And typically the lower you go down, the more likely that par 4 scoring is going to be the key factor. And I'm sure if we were to do that, it would be. But the fact that par 5 scoring is popping up there, in terms of top 10, that means players really do have to go out and score on those par fives. Uh, we're seeing ball striking, total driving, be key stats. We're seeing uh, drives, good drive percentage over driving accuracy be a key factor. And then I like to look at scrambling instead of stroke skiing around the green. Uh, stroke skiing around the green is a factor in stroke skiing T to green. Uh, and I want to point this out because so is stroke skiing approach. And um, we're seeing scrambling kind of pop up just as much as that. It's something kind of interesting to me. Uh, definitely a course where you kind of have to just be playing accurate you got to be playing your golf game uh this week all right so now moving on into the key stats for this week it's no surprise that these players right here are popping up as the top stat fits for this week so the key stats i will be looking at this week again it's it's a crazy stretch guys where a lot of the tournaments are tournaments in the past like two months or so that have been more difficult events harder to score on events and with that it's really introduced me into these effective stats that I've been using on 9to5 Sports. And it's really been a separation point, I think, for the player pool and just 
predictability there. So effective ball striking is what we're going to be looking at. Effective total driving, effective birdie to bogey ratio. And then I got a new one in there for you guys. It's going to be a effective strokes gained accuracy, which I was looking at it. And it's one that I'm introducing for this one because we already showed you guys what the key stats were. Just kind of factoring that all into more conducive PGA DFS stats for us guys to be able to go out and use. So the players that really checked the boxes there were Joaquin Neiman, Corey Connors, Ryan Palmer, Emiliano Grillo, and Russell Henley. Really no shock there. Um, if I were to tell you guys what the key predictive stats were there on the tournament page, you would have thought that these guys would be in the top 10. So no surprise there. Then just looking over course history here as well. It's very difficult to get a good sample of course history because a lot of these golfers have not played here more than twice in the past four years. And you guys know I like to look at the past four years because that's when it's the most predictable. Um, really no need to go further than that. So looking at it, you know, not that many that qualify for at least two starts in the last four years for this graphic here. Paul Casey is one of those guys winning it the last two years. Uh, Sanjay M would be second, but he only finished fourth. We have to go down the list a little bit to find Louis Ustazen, who technically ranks sixth in course history. But if we're looking at, you know, at least two starts in the last four years, he's had a second 16th and a seventh place finish then we have to go a little bit lower as well zach johnson sam burns and Roy sabatini we only have two starts here in the last four years as well so definitely a tournament in which we do not see as much course history it is a, a more difficult event and maybe that could be why uh pulling up recent form and then we'll get into the picks here for you guys so recent form kind of well, one shock here was EVR on the top end. Um, now, I do like to look at kind of just like the last eight to 10 weeks for course history. So for him, he's only factoring in his uh, Valero, Texas, where he finished 14th and his Dell match play where he finished ninth. So definitely a little bit of skewed data there. And that's actually why I'm not including the Zero Classic results just yet, because it's going to skew the data a little bit. I didn't want to do that. It's a group play format. Definitely a different event for you guys. And then after that, we got Jason Kolkrak. No surprise there. Corey Connors, Keegan Bradley, which was a little bit of a shock to me, finishing 23rd, 30th, 29th, 10th. You know, pretty solid there. And then Cameron Tringali kind of rounding out the top um, five there. But Cameron Tringali was actually tied with um, Louis Ustazen and Paul Casey as well. So um, really a lot of golfers playing some good recent form here for this tournament. All right, guys. So now we're going to move on in, into the high tier plays. Uh, once again, this price range is from 11K to 9K price run range or 12K to 9K price run range. Typically, I only like to give you guys four plays in this price run range. This week's a little bit different. We got a lot of quality plays in this price run range. And honestly, I don't really see the point of paying up for really the top end guys. So for me, I'm going to be looking at someone like Victor Hovland to start off with that 10.5. I do like his price point a lot. Look at his recent form. It has been spectacular. Minus his mom really effing him over at the Players' Championship. The guy has been in great recent form. Second at the Farmers. Fifth at the Genesis Invite. Second at the Workday. 49th at the API. Would have been a May cut at the Players if it wasn't for his mom. <laughs> 42nd at the Dell. And 21st at the Masters. So, you know, pretty solid recent form. Still ranks top 20 in recent form, even with that miscut at the players. Then we look at the stat rank, top 10 stat fit. We look at a guy that you want to look at effective strokes gained accuracy. Yeah, that is going to be Victor Hovland. He ranks top 12 in that. Um, everything else is going to be top 38 or better. So for me, Victor Hovland at 10.5, yes, that's a lot to pay up for. And yes, I don't think we really have to go out and do that. This is going to be a very similar play to me of that of Cam Smith two weeks ago, where yes, he's priced. A little bit higher than he should be, so it's going to be tough to land up on him. But this is where you probably could get some GPP you know, ownership leverage. And I hate to mention that, but really, the only time I like to look at ownership is when it is you know, trying to gain leverage. I never like to get off of someone. If someone's a good, a good play and people aren't on him as a good play, you know, whatever. You just kind of got to eat the chalk. But let me look at Paul Casey here, guys. 10 K okay, for Paul Casey, the two-time defending back-to-back champ here. Paul Casey has been playing some great golf, really besides that miscut at the RBC Heritage. I've been playing some quality golf, still ranks top four in recent form. That's just because everything else was spe spectacular before that. 26th, 28th, 5th, 10th, 5th, and 8th place finish. We look at his stat rank play. Everything is going to be top 28 or better, giving him a top 17 stat rank there. And then actually he ranks out second best in the model, right behind the core play of this week, Corey freaking Connors. Now, to me, I don't really, I get the price point. 
and it, I kind of hate that he's at this price point. So DraftKings did a great job of pricing him this week, 9.6. So let's just look at it. Recent form wise, third. That's because he's at a fourth at the RBC Heritage, eighth at the Masters, 14th at the Valero, 61st at the Dell match play, which you don't really have to factor in there because, you know, match play tournament, and then a seventh and a third place finish. So really, in his past five tournaments, excluding the Dell match play, he's had a T14 or better finish, guys, with four of those five being top 10 finishes. Absolutely spectacular. He only has one start here in the last four years where he finished top 20 there yet with a 16th place finish we're looking at all the key stats guys everything is top 10 or better seventh in effective total driving fourth in effective ball striking third in effective greens game ninth in strokes gain total effective birdie to burglar ratio eight at effective strokes gain accuracy first and he's made six straight cuts in a row honestly guys i just love the price point for Corey connors great job by DraftKings pricing him here because you know, you kind of have to think about it, but it's just going to be one where I'm going to go ahead and plug and play. Now, if we're going to look for another play in this price point range, I kind of like Louis Oosthuizen again. You know, ranks out pretty well in recent form as well. Um, zero missed cuts, 26, 61st. Once again, not really including that down match play, 41st, 6th, 11th, and 29th place finish. We look at that course history. That's pretty good as well. 2nd, 16th, and 7th place finish. Going to be tough to beat that really this year. Uh, really, the only knock with someone like Louis Usaisen is going to be his stat rank. It's where he gets knocked a little bit. And that's unfortunate, but still really not bad. I do like Louis Usaisen a decent amount this week. Now we're going to be looking at someone like Abraham Manser. Abraham Manser, I like a ton as well, guys. 9.3. I was kind of hoping he could be a little sneaky play for us again this week, but... Really no reason to fade him. Um, recent form-wise, he's been a top 25 machine. Really, over his last six starts, been a top 25 machine. Missed cut at the Gen Invite, and then top five finish at the um, AMX. So, you know, spectacular there. Top 16 finish here in 2018. You know, really, all these guys, you can find a reason to play, and we really have no reason to fade them. I like all these plays in this price point range. All right, guys, now moving into the mid-tier price point range, and this is where... You know, we're finally to that point of the season where the mid-tier is going to be kind of the most predictable price run range, the range where you should make most of your builds out. Um, there's going to be less variance, so if you build, you know, core your builds out from this price run range, it's going to work out. I didn't even include Justin Rose on this, who has been playing great uh, recently. We got someone like Jason Kokrak, who I like a lot. You know, the price point's not that high. Uh, recent form-wise has been pretty darn solid. Nine straight made cuts in a row. Great course history. Second, eighth. 58th and then a missed cut in 2016 i already kind of mentioned though i only like to look at the last four years of data so technically 2016 would be five years ago the data really starts to be less significant the more you guys move on so you know jason kokrak really solid for his course history we're looking at the stats he's gonna be a top 23 stat fit like that he's gonna be a top 12 in the model this week so i do like him a lot maybe they get someone like charlie hoffman now charlie hoffman has been a little bit hit or miss at this tournament but i love the fact that we do get that upside with him an 18th place finish in 2019 two missed cuts in a row then 11th place finish in 2016 we look at his recent form top 10 in recent form rank 18th second 34th 17th 10th 52nd 7th and then the missed cut you know he kind of struggled there a little bit that once again going back to it as due to his injury there since that injury is finished 10th at the api 17th at the players 34th at the corrales second at the valero and 18th at the rbc heritage he's gonna be a top 11 stat fit this week gets a little knocked at the ball striking and total driving there a little bit worrisome there could be a little bit better there but you know great price point for charlie hoffman looking at ryan palmer Ryan Palmer, to me, guys, is just the play that I, I really can't pass up on this week. And he is actually going to be another core play for me this week. Uh, got him pulled up here. 8.5. That's going to be a great price point for him. He ranks top 12 in recent form rank. Uh, just quality golf. 13 straight made cuts in a row, guys. I could actually move that recent form rank up a little bit more if I wasn't just looking at like the you know past 8 to 10 weeks of data. Spectacular there for Ryan Palmer. Uh, course history rank, you know, 22nd. That's okay. He's had a 28th and a 42nd place finish here in the last four years. He ranks out as a top three stat fit, much like last week where he's a top five stat rank play. And, you know, there's really no reason not to play John Rahm and Ryan Palmer. Same reason this week with Ryan Palmer. I just really like him as a pick, especially at this price point. 8.5 for a guy that's made two straight cuts in a row. 
uh, at this tournament and 13 straight cuts in a row on the tour. He's third best to at fit and 17th best in the bottom. Really, I just, I don't, I can't not play him this week. Just a great price point for him. One player that, you know, we've been on a ton recently is Cameron Tringali. I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about the three straight missed cuts here at this tournament. That's worrisome to me. Now, he has been in strong recent form, decent stat fit. You can play him if you want to, but something like Emiliano Grillo does make a little bit more sense to me. When we think of, like, an accuracy player, that is definitely Emiliano Grillo. Uh, effective total driving, effective ball striking second in that. Effective greens gain fifth in that. Strokes gain TD green. Could be a little bit better than that. We know that he's just a bad putter, and that's really where he's getting knocked. Um, everything else in our top five, though. That's insane. So, really good stat fit there. And he's shown the upside recently. Been a little bit too hit or miss to really go out and trust him as a core play. Uh, you know, that miscut at the players, the miscut at the Genesis invite, and the miscut at the farmers. But every other finish other than that has been like top 25 or better. So he definitely does have that upside for you. Just a little bit worrisome there. You know, you would probably figure out pretty early if, if he's going to be the play for you this week. Then the last play in this price point range that I really do like is going to be, once again... Chris Kirk, not if I was boy this year, Chris Kirk. And now that I'm saying that, um, it's just a matter of time before he misses the cut or he's going to go full Harris English on us and eventually go out and win. Uh, that'd be great. Um, I really don't want to see a drop off though. Guys, the recent form has been spectacular. He ranks out top nine in that. And that's because we also are drawing in that waste management Phoenix Open, that missed cut there. But since then, 16th, 8th, 48th, 25th, 6th, and 7th place finish. So Chris Kirk has been in strong recent form, guys. He's going to be a top 20 stat rank play. Uh, course history is where he gets knocked. Missed cut in 2019, 49th in 2018, uh, 2017th missed cut, and then a 42nd place finish in 2016. Now the price point is absolutely great for him, and that's why I really don't think we can uh, afford to not play him. You know, he ranks top 25 or top 26 in the model this week really like him as a pick this week especially at that price point all right now we're going to move on into that low tier price point range and you know this is a range where i really do not want to get more than like one or two players in my builds with so once again really going to be going hard on that really 9k to 8k price point range this week with my builds if i have to these are the players i'm going to be looking at uh, dipping into so we'll start with keegan bradley keegan bradley has been in strong recent form guys um top four actually um top 10 staff it ranks top 16 in the model i'm fine with him as a play the only problem with him is two missed cuts two make cuts not bad for tournament history, I'm fine with it at that price point. Then we're going to be looking at two players that, you know, I think found something in their game. So we got Cameron Champ pulled up. Cameron Champ, so played well last week at the um, Zero Classic. And he really did find something in his game at the Valero Texas Open, finishing 34th. Um, really struggling in round one of that tournament and then played well since then. I was really shocked to see him go on and play well at the Masters. But it's clear that he found something in his game. And if he did... This is a great price point for Cameron Champ. Um, guys, if he he could easily go out and finish top 10 um, if he found something in his game, which it seems like he did. He continued to play well last week. Don't mind him. Not something you want to go crazy with. No course history. Not going to be good stat fit, but definitely a play that I don't mind. Then we're looking at Danny Willett. Danny Willett, casually a decent golfer, especially for this price point. We all know who Dan Danny Willett is. I don't know why I phrased it like that, but... Um, didn't play bad last week at the Zero Classic, 31st, 8th, two missed cuts, and then uh, 18th place finish at the RBC Heritage. He typically does play better on tougher tracks, so we do like to see that. Um, not going to be a good stat fit. Typically plays in harder events when he's over here, so that does make sense. Um, 42nd and 22nd, four course history here. That's not bad. 7.2 I really do like. But then we're going to get into our boy, Matthew Naismith here. All right, so Matthew Neesmith here, uh, going to be a good price point for him. 7.1. I was a little bit disappointed that we couldn't get him as a value play this week. Um, recent form rank could be, you know, better. 34th and that. Uh, we'll take that, though. Um, really had a rough stretch in there. Players, API, two missed cuts in a row. Um, prior to that, a 20th, a 16th, and a 7th place finish. Since then, since those two missed cuts at the players in API, he's finished 48th at the RBC Heritage, 34th at the... Valero Texas Open and a 36 at the Honda Classic. We look at his stats. His stats are all really good this week. Um, effective birdie to bogey ratio. That's where he struggles. Um, you know, can be better around the green. So that's really the the 
issue with Matthew Naismith. So um, if he can improve that, he can easily go out and get a top 15 finish. He definitely does have to improve that, though, this week. Um, 7.1, I do like that price point. But once again, I don't think we actually have to go down that low if, you know, if we don't want to. And then just looking at the value tier range this week, nothing crazy this week, guys. Honestly, there's... I really don't want to go into this price point range if we don't have to. Now, I, I do think there is some upside in this price point range, but definitely not a range where there's going to be high predictability. Um, we're looking at, you know, projected cut percentages here. Um, we can see one, two, three, four, five players with a 50% chance or better uh, chance to make the cut this week. That is not good. Okay. Let's see. Um, which one ranks out the highest in the model this week? There's going to be Chase Seifert, 19th. You know, stat rank, that's fine, 38th. And recent form rank, he's been solid recent form. So if you want to just factor in recent form, you could do that. Something like Bryce Garnett, I could see, you know, going out and making the cut here. He's been, you know, hit or miss recently, but I don't mind him. Um, James Hahn, you know, if you want to go with him, you can. He finally is starting to struggle staff it wise. But nothing that I love. I will say someone like Vincent Whaley down here. He's just been a cut maker. I don't know what it is. Even last week, I was able to make the cut. So, you know, six straight make cuts on a tour. Had a rough stretch in there of golf and kind of figured it out again. Um, kind of like that. So for, for a guy that I guess is streaky, uh, 6.4 for a potential make cut, I don't mind that. But, you know, this is a price point range where I really just do not want to go to if we don't have to this week. But that is all I have for you guys this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. I do appreciate that. And I do have a nice little new golf ball review video out there for you guys. If you guys want to check that out, it is going to be the Spalding golf ball here. Kind of interesting golf ball. If you guys want to take a picky out of it, fun video. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, keep cashing.